you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence this evening with us. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to speak tonight about men seeking honor. We are to seek the honor of God, not of men. John 5, 44. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from God only? If we seek and receive honor from men, we do not believe God. That's what it's saying. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and not seek the honor that comes from God only? We are to only seek the honor that comes from God, not that bestowed upon us by men. In verse 41, again John chapter 5, Jesus is speaking and he says, I receive not honor from men. And in verse 42 he says, But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. He's speaking to those who receive the honor of men, but not the honor of God. And what are they lacking? They have not the love of God in them. Christ is the love of God we are to have in us. And if we are to be in his image, we will say as Jesus did, I receive not honor from men. If Christ be in us, we do not seek, we do not receive honor from men. And the degree to which we are seeking, the degree to which we are receiving honor from men shows the degree to which Christ is not in us. We're making up for that by seeking honor from men. Okay? It also shows whether the love of Christ is in us or whether it's another love, namely the love of this world which is different. The love of God is, the, is Christ himself. Praise God. So if we're seeking what Christ himself did not seek, that is evidence that the love of God is not in us. If we seek those this has two levels. There is a level for leaders seeking the honor of men and those who are not leaders but they are seeking to be associated with men honored by men. If we're seeking those who receive honor from men rather than seeking men of God, we do not believe God. Okay? And likewise, Christ is not in us or we would not be seeking such men we would be seeking the men of God. Christ in us does not receive honor from men. He has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did not receive honor from men then, he does not receive honor from men now. How can we say Christ is in us and here we are receiving honor from men? Those without Christ will seek honor from men. It's very clear. Those seeking Christ will receive Christ, and as such they will receive his messengers. They will receive the true messengers of God. But those who are simply seeking association with the honorable men of this world do not receive the true messengers of God because that's not what they're seeking. Praise God. Christ's messengers do not seek honor from men. Praise God. 
If we, just a warning, if we seek out those who are honored of men, but are not, we're not seeking men of God who receive no honor of men, there's danger. Be warned. Where will this lead us? We need to consider this in what we are seeking. Let's continue in John 5 at verse 43. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Christ who came in the image of the Father is not received. Thus, the Father whom they claimed to worship was not received. This is what he was showing them. Likewise today, a messenger of Christ, a true man or woman of God, is not received because Christ, who is in them, who is speaking through them, who is, he is the one who is not being received. But of course the messenger is blamed. But the fact is, it's Christ that is not being received. Those who reject Christ, as evident by their rejection of his true messengers, will instead seek after men who receive honor of other men, but not of God. There is only two ways. Okay? So if we are listening to a man of God, we're seeking God, we're listening to a man of God, and at some point we find ourselves seeking after a man who's honored of men, watch out. The reason we are doing so is because we are rejecting God. Not overtly, perhaps, but we must understand that a man or a woman of God speaks as an oracle of God. It is the voice of God speaking through that individual. And when we hear it, and we realize God isn't quite what he th we thought he was, so we turn to another to have our ears tickled by men who are honored of men, but not of God. So let's go back to verse 44 we started with here. How can ye believe? He's saying to them, you say you believe, but how can you? How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from God only? And verse 46, for, ye, for had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? You see, Moses' writings were his words. It's the word of God. And they're saying, well, we believe Moses. We seek the Father. But here's Christ in the Father's image speaking his own very words which Moses spake. They're not receiving him. So it's proof. They didn't believe Moses. They said they believed Moses. They believed they believed Moses. In the same way, if someone is not believing a messenger of God, in this case Moses, but Jesus himself, people did not believe, one of the apostles, or even today, if there is a messenger of God, if someone does not believe that word and goes seeking another message, it is because they do not believe God. They will say, the same as the Jews, that they believe God, and they're looking for God, and they're seeking God. But as Jesus said, how can you believe? How can you believe? When you turn from the one speaking my words, you are deceived. How can one believe God when one does not believe God's messenger? 
praise God when we would rather listen to men who seek their own men who do not hear from God in some cases but we like what they're saying and we call it God and we say we're seeking God but we're not we say we believe God we believe in a God of our own making but not the one true God because when he reveals himself for what he is we find someone else to listen to. We seek and listen to the message that we want to hear. And our heart is revealed, are we truly believing and seeking God or not? If we truly seek God, we will hear God and we will hear his messengers. If not, we can convince ourselves that we seek God, but we will seek out for ourselves messengers with another message and there are plenty of them to choose from all the while believing that it's God but you see the scripture speaks of a great deception there's another version of this where people say well God is everywhere if we're truly seeking God and we hear God speak to us about a certain situation or place and yet we continue to seek something else another calling that we feel we're better suited to another place we'd rather be it is not that God is everywhere and I can serve him everywhere I can serve him any way I want to it is because we are choosing to serve another God we do not get to choose where and how to serve God. We must follow Him and be where He places us and do as He tells us to do. We can't change that. Praise God. It's either His voice or it isn't. We're either seeking Him or we're not. So it's time to stop playing games that I'm seeking God. Oh, I'm not sure, but, I'm, but I can go do this for God. We're kidding ourselves. So verse 45, Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses in whom ye trust. See, there is one that accuses Moses and us. The devil, right? But even Moses stands as a witness against them because he can say, I spoke the words of God and you did not believe God. Praise God, when we hear a man of God speak and we choose to seek something else, it stands as a witness against us because our heart has been revealed. Praise God. And there are many today that don't believe God. They only believe they believe God. May we examine our hearts in the presence of the Lord to make sure we're not among them. Praise God. But people will leave off from listening to men of God to follow false prophets. Why do they follow them? Because they're honored of men. They look good. They feel good to the flesh. It's what I want. But it's not what God wants. They'll follow the false prophets rather than the men or women of God because they love to have their ears tickled. But let us not be among them. So let's look at some examples in Scripture. Numbers chapter 22, verses 37. Balak offered Balaam honor before men with the words, Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? Does that not sound like the words of a serpent? Are leaders today hearing those same words, luring them to seek the honor of men rather than the honor of God? And Balak later says to him again, I thought to promote thee unto great honor, but lo, the Lord hath kept thee back from honor. Ooh. God's keeping you from honor. 
I was going to promote you. There's that serpent again. Many leaders among us are hearing such lies. But let us not hearken to these lies. God's messengers receive honor of God, not of men. But men seeking the honor of men will take such offers to be honored of men. And it is a grave error not only to do so, but to lead people in the path that brings honor to men and not God. Oh my. And how many are on that path today? God's messengers recognize this and will not go down that path. Let's look at Judges chapter 9. Abimelech, he's an example. He was seeking the honor of men over his brethren. And we learn from Abimelech's story that a man who is seeking the honor of men will kill his own brethren to have it rather than seeking the honor which only comes from God. Seventy of his brethren were killed so he could be king. And he had the people convinced he was the one. Only Jotham, the youngest, survived because he hid. And Jotham stood up and he told a story. The story of the tree. So I'm going to read it. It's found in Judges 9, verses 8 through 15. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness, wherewith by me they honor God and man, to be promoted over the trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit to go be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine which cheereth God and man and go be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, as a thorn bush, the bramble, come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. You see, the bramble took the job. Now these trees symbolize people. The olive tree, a man or woman filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit, did not want to be promoted over the other trees, but was happy that Christ was honored by the fatness of his oil. Right? God and man is honored. God and man. Who is God and man? It's Christ. He is the only one, Son of God, Son of man. He's the only one. Christ is honored by me. I don't want to be promoted over you. Christ is honored by me. The fig tree is the one producing fruit. Those producing the true fruit of the Spirit don't want to be promoted. Why? Christ is being honored by the fruit being revealed in them. The vine, those receiving the new wine, the revelation of Christ, those revealing Christ, honoring Christ, do not want to be promoted. So the bottom line is, we're looking for a leader to follow. We're looking to be a leader, but a man of God or a woman of God. Spirit-filled, fruit-producing men and women who receive revelation from God and honor God by revealing Christ do not and will not seek the honor of men. And Jotham the youngest knew this. The bramble, however, thorns, no fruit, no oil, no revelation of God. He sought to be promoted over the trees. 
It's like the goats. They'll always try to have the highest point in the pasture. The bramble will be the one who seeks promotion in the eyes of men. The bramble is the one who seeks to be honored by men. Not the men of God. They are happy that Christ is honored by what's coming out of them. Because God put it there and it comes out and it honors God. It goes back to God. They are a pure vessel. That's a true man or woman of God. Not someone seeking promotion. Unless it it's from God. Now, just as a little aside, what did they put on Christ's head? A crown of thorns. They considered him a bramble. They had no, no knowledge of God. The wicked always see the good as wicked, you know. So Abimelech was a bramble king. And if we read the rest of Judges chapter 9, I encourage you, Go home and read over this. Let the word of the Lord sink deeper into our hearts. If we read the rest of chapter 9 in Judges, we'll see what happened when Abimelech became king. It wasn't good. And it's never good. Haman, Haman's another one who sought the honor of men rather than the honor of God, who sought to be promoted. And it did not go well with him. We can read about Haman and Esther if we're not familiar with the story. People in general want men who are honored of other men as their leaders more than they want men of God as their leaders, despite what they say. And it's because they do not want God as their leader, but they will not admit that. We saw this in Samuel. God had appointed judges over the children of Israel, and Samuel was a seer. He was the prophet of God. And he would come to the towns and he would speak the words of God. And what would they do? They'd shut up the doors. They were afraid to let him in. What's he going to say now? They didn't want to hear. Unless they knew he was coming to say something good, then they'd let him in. So, they didn't want God as their leader. And that's why they wanted a king, an earthly king, a man who was honored by other men, like other nations. And God told this to Samuel before he appointed Saul as king. He told Samuel about this. The people wanted Saul. They wanted Saul who was head and shoulders above all, who was honorable among men. They did not want Samuel. But it wasn't Samuel they were rejecting. It was God. Likewise, people don't want men of God. They want the mighty men of this world to rule over them. People flock to the mighty men of this world, but they do not flock to the Samuels. They run from the Samuels. Because the Samuels likely will not say what they want to hear. A leader who says what the people want to hear will rise in prominence and will be honored of men because you'll have a big following. A man who speaks the words of God that the people do not want to hear will never be honored of men. Now Samuel was grieved that the people wanted a king. He understood. But God said to Samuel, give the people what they want. Those are the words of God. But they wanted Saul, give them Saul. That's what they want. 1 Samuel 8 verse 7, And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected you, they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. So what did God say? Give the people what they want. But giving the people what they want was a judgment for rejecting God. 
Do we see that? It was the word of God to give them what they want, but this was a judgment. And what do we hear today? Are we hearing this? Are we hearing give the people what they want? Are we hearing find out what they need and give it to them? Find out what they want and give it to them. And God's allowing it. Men building their own kingdoms on this. And God's allowing it. Why? Because a judgment is coming. And the judgment is coming on the people. And the judgment especially is coming on the leaders. Who go along with this to receive honor of men. Rather than those who are grieved. By what is happening. Who are grieved by the people getting what they want. Rather than God getting what he wants. Praise God. I'll be, I'm finishing up here in a bit. God allows the Sauls to rise up because it's what the people want. It doesn't mean it's what God wants. But he allows it as a judgment. Men seeking preeminence, men seeking to be mighty, to be men of renown, meaning men honored by other men, are not seeking God who is mighty. They're seeking their own kingdom, not the kingdom of God. Yet we follow them. You know, in the days of Noah, there were mighty men of renown, mighty men who were honored of men. And then what happened? The judgment came, the flood, and took them all away. God allowed it, and then he judged them. And the scripture says, the time that we're in now, even, will be as in the days of Noah. Mighty men of renown, giving the people what they want, receiving the honor of men, allowed by God because it's what the people want, because they have rejected God. And God knows it, and what follows is going to be a judgment. But after Saul came David, a man after God's own heart. And in this time, God is also raising up the Davids, the Samuels, who, in the image of Christ, are after God's own heart, not seeking the honor of men. You see, the judgment is coming, and Christ is coming. And we have a choice, but we must prepare now. Will we find ourselves among the mighty of this earth, honored by men, but under God's judgment? Or will we find ourselves with the Lord? Shall we give the people what they want, or shall we give God what he wants? Shall we seek what we want, or shall we seek what God wants? Would you stand, please? Praise God. Praise God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this word of warning that we might have time to reflect on our own selves and seek your face, Lord, that you may correct us from any error that is in us, Lord. We are deceived and do not even know we are deceived so many times, Lord. Help us, Lord. Praise God. May your truth enter in and our hearts be turned to you, Lord, that we seek your face and not the honor of men, that we're not led astray by the false prophets. Praise God. That we find ourselves with Christ on that day, not under the judgment, that we find ourselves in the ark, not under the sea. Praise God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your presence.